This is Tracera neocaledonica, and I really enjoy the species because it develops some just vibrant red coloration on its leaf lamina and maintains greener coloration on its petioles with white hairs that uh, sort of run along each side of the petiole that you can hopefully get a, a little glimpse of here in this video. But it makes for a really nice combination, sort of similar to Drosera camporepestris with the, the green petioles and the red leaf lamina, but altogether a very different form and uh, structure. But this particular species prefers more of a tropical environment, and I didn't realize this until reading uh, a fellow grower call, uh, who refers to himself as Stockholm Online, uh, who, who maintains a blog, um, and I'll link to that in the description, but um, he recommends growing this with Pediolaris sundews, and his plants are stunning in particular. Um, they're growing with many more active leaves than mine has, which usually it maintains about eight or so in its active state. Um, but I've sort of had challenges with this particular species over the past two years since I was originally providing it cooler temperatures when it was originally trying to establish itself, and it nearly died on me twice before I managed to get it established in a peat sand mix uh, in this four inch pot with a few other um, sundews growing here in my basement. Um, but as I, I mentioned, this tropical sundew usually grows in an environment that stays above 20 degrees Celsius year-round. You can check the temperature guide online, and I'll, I'll also link to the temperatures in the description below. But um, I definitely recommend giving this one more uh, heat and humidity. And you'll probably notice that uh, your plant will grow much faster than in cool, cooler temperatures. Um, I'm yet to try this myself, but just from seeing results online, uh, it looks very promising. I would also recommend feeding this one as often as you can, since it really grows slowly, um, especially in cooler temperatures when it's left unfed. But I guess that, that is what allows it to develop this really neat red coloration um, that I, I really enjoy. Um, aside from that, this one has only flowered for me once, and um, that's because it really hasn't looked like this until now. That's actually why I'm making the video so late of this particular one. Um, but hopefully you can kind of get a, a good idea of what this one looks like. And I, I really, really enjoy growing this species, and I'm glad it's finally settled in. Unfortunately, it's very rare in the U.S. right now, and I, I don't know if I'll be able to get this one in culture in the near future, but I'd love to spread this one around as soon as I can. And uh, especially once I try experimenting in the, the Pidiolaris setup, hopefully I can get this one spread around um, a lot more. So keep your eyes peeled for that, and uh, in the meantime, uh, just hang tight while we get this one <laughs> propagated, and uh, hopefully we'll get it spread around here in the near future. So with, with that, I think I'll conclude this video, and hope you enjoyed Tracera Neocaledonica.